All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, while there is no agreed definition of um, good governance, United Nations human rights define good governance to relate to the political and institutional progress and outcomes that are necessary to achieve the goals of development of any nation. Now, the true test of good governance is the degree to which it delivers on the promise of human rights, civil cultural, economic, political, and social rights. Now, it is only natural to look to the youth, especially, you know, who are the ones demanding, you know, and upholding um, good governance. However, older members of the nation are known to bring wisdom, calm, dependability, and unconditional love that frame the views of the broader society and shape the future of young generations. So today we're asking, what is the responsibility of the older generation, right, in ensuring that good governance truly, you know, is established, especially in our continent, African continent? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wakeshow, Africa 1, with the hashtag Wakeshow. So I'll bring in our guest in a minute. Diola, like, I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think that the older generation can do. I feel personally that they, ha they have failed us. Mm. Yeah, because again, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember sitting in f with my grandpa before, mm. at least I was privileged to, to meet one of my grandparents before he passed. He would always complain. You know, he used to be a staff of, um, was it Nitel or not? He would always complain, government, government, voila, you know, and all of that. And I feel like, you know, that mm, this kind of um, feeling of there's nothing we can do, docility mm. and all of that, I feel they were the ones that planted that docility in us, you know. So I think it is the rebellion mm. that we now carried along. Mm. That is not making this new generation, they have gone haywire. Like their <laughs> own is that if you come for me, I draw your blood, you know. So <laughs> like I feel like, so the, I feel like if anything needs to be remedied, mm. it will still have to go back to the older generation. Trust Absolute, me, absolutely. it's not all these young people that we are seeing. Absolutely. It is when they say, ah, come, this one we've done, we've overdone it. Let mm. us... Let us step back. Mm. That's when I think we can make any headway. Mm. But what do, you, what do you think? Okay, so I think that um, mentoring, number one, I mean, that's at the core of, um, you know, want getting the younger generation to do better. You know, they, they, they come with experience. It's easy for them to say, okay, you know what? We've done it this way. This was the process and all that. It didn't work. Mm. You, there, <laughs> continue, continue. <laughs> There is that. There is also role modeling. Hmm. You know, of course, now it's a case of um, do what I say, not what I do. You know, again, like the young people, it is about why are you not acting what you are saying? Practice what you preach, you know. So you can't be saying something and then be doing something else. Hmm. You know, again, it sends the wrong um, signal. Then there's conflict resolution. Now, at the older generation, are they truly managing conflict? So you have situations where even in private sectors, public sectors and wherever, where issues happen, are they really mediating in order to ensure that they are resolving conflicts amicably where everybody becomes a winner? You know, because the, the true test of conflict Can we really have everyone as winners? Yes. Is it possible? In, in some okay. ways. In some ways. Yeah. I, I think it's possible. Let me hear none of your thoughts. <laughs> then I'll bring in our guest. <laughs> Quickly, well, Nama. Just took the, yeah. Go ahead. Jonah just took the words out of my mouth. Of course, I can't overemphasize the role that mentorship has to play. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the fact that we need more exemplary, exemplary leadership. Mm -hmm. Over the year, I think that's where the young generation have struggled where a lot of what they've seen have not been exemplary. It's not something that they want to emulate and um, they're fighting against it because, the, like you said, the, the, the young generation have felt that this generation has let them down completely in terms of being the... The, the, the being in charge, being in control, helping them to guide them to see the prospects and uh, to be able to harness their own uh, potentials. They have not, they have more of stifled every opportunity that the young ones have to be able to bring um, value to the table. So the younger generation have actually felt let down in terms of advice, uh, 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 being 
that advisory role, so to speak. We mm -hmm. don't have leaders that have shown high levels of wisdom and knowledge, even in management of conflict. And the situations that we have currently in Nigeria could be better, could have been better if we had leaders that better manage situations. But there's, there's a lot to process with uh, the older generation and their role in helping the younger generation understand the process, that there is a process mm. and the role that they are supposed to uh, um, uh, uh, um, take on, how responsibility is also part of it. So mm. there's, there's a, a whole lot to unpack when it comes to governance and uh, the older generation versus the younger generation. Mm. And I'm glad that Bolaho is in the house to bring more light on that. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. On that note, Bolaho logic. <laughs> <laughs> professional who has spent the best of the last 30 years. You see, he's a Yimbi veteran. He's the older generation that we're waiting for. <laughs> in corporate Nigeria, his industry exposure cuts across professional services, investment banking, and advisory services. You see, the words are just aligning. So corporate um, banking, print media, education, healthcare, oil and gas, and telecom. He's passionate about issues of leadership and good governance. And of course, he has joined us live in studio, looking dapper as mm -hmm. always. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yeah, thanks for you, you having see, me. I saw you smiling. You were laughing. At some point, you were nodding. Yeah. Okay. You, are, you are the older generation we've been waiting for. I mean, like, this conversation, um, you know, it's us trying to look at things in a different light. Up until 2023, February 25th, I really felt that, okay, if anything must change, the youth must step up to the plate and make the change happen. Everybody carry load. Carry, what's it called, PVC and all of that. We did all the drama and everything. Today they are in tribunal. They say they are debating. They've kicked out tele, um, televising, whatever. We're keeping all of those things aside. There's a problem. Correct especially in the African continent. And this is not really unique to Nigeria, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, we're having issues around good governance. And it seems like, you know, the narrative before was the youth and all of that. But, you know, we are trying to step back on ways to say, no, I think if any problem mm -hmm. can be solved, it is to trace it back to where it started in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But anybody we sight with gray hair like Bolao, <laughs> we're tracing the problem back to you. <laughs> but hey, that's just on a lighter note. Really, when we talk about good governance and the responsibility of the older generation, where do we start from? Do they even have any responsibility in ensuring that there's good governance? Do they have any role to play? Obviously. Um, the, the, the older generation has a very huge role to play. And it starts from exemplary leadership. Um, one of the voids that we have is a situation in, in which a lot of young people could not see someone to look up to. And where there is nobody to look up to, whoever they find, uh, whether it's a, a, a weed, publicly weed-smoking uh, 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 entertainer, or whoever, whoever catches their fancy, um, in terms of however they have defined uh, what they look up to, that's, that's who they will follow. Mm. So the younger people look up and they want to see, let, let, let me tell you one short story. Um, my son, I, I, I took him for exam, primary school exam from years ago, school. And uh, when he came out of the exam, he was physically flustered. Mm. I said, what, what happened? He said they were dictating the answers uh, in, the, in the exam hall and uh, uh, teachers were walking around and, you know, asking what people have written, giving them answer script and, 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 and all of that. The young boy was totally embarrassed. Mm. Now, mm. that is from, coming from a generation it was meant to look up to. These were the same set as his own teachers mm. in school, but that is what they were doing. So this can cut across to several other segments of our society, whether it is leadership at the local government level, even at the traditional ruler level. We now have situations in which even wife beaters are becoming traditional rulers, mm -hmm. uh, who 
some are even on, celebrated on and drugs revered. and revered. So when there are there are not many people to look up to, the society becomes what it has become. So one very good step in the right direction is to have more leaders who will show them the light. Mm. Exemplary leadership. And the more of those we have, the more of them are willing to also mentor the young people, the better for the society. Mm. Young people, there are gaps for them also. The, 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 the current generation are not just a product of the nurture of their parents, like maybe someone like me could have been. I was largely a product of the nurture of my parents and the school. They are nurtured by too many things from the TV to internet to so many things. <laughs> so even some of the parents do not know their own children. Yeah. It's totally different from my own generation when your parent could literally say, that is where you will likely be. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a totally different ball game. So the older generation must make it a point of duty to understand a lot of us do not understand that generation. We are puzzled. Why do they do what they do? Why do they behave the way they behave? Mm. But paying attention to them and trying to understand where they're coming from may help us to help them or to support them rather than having a fight. Because that's, that's what we literally have yeah. with them. Yeah. So yeah. I want to ask a question. I'll come to you, Diola. I know, help me out here, mm. the Yoruba culture when, I mean, they told me about the story of the Agbada. Mm. It was supposed to signify, you know, you've done hard work and all of Correct. that. Mm. And that's why you're wearing that regalia, because it's almost like a proof that um, this is to showcase you've that. You've been there, done that. I've, been, mm. I've put in the work, and mm. this is my achievement and all of that. Because we're talking about older generation. Correct. Look at where we are today in terms of moral standing. I told someone, I said, see, I don't have a problem whoever they want to de de select or elect as a leader. <laughs> when someone, I know that there are some things I will not come out for because there, there is a question mark yeah. in my character as a person. So because of that, I will decide that, you know what, let me step back. Let's look for someone that has a bit of transparency and clarity with their, their records. Let me push that person forward. And so I take a back seat so that, you know, my reputation does not taint mm. the position, right? You are in a country where certain allegations were made, right? And all of a sudden, it seems like we are all turning a blind eye. On one hand, we're turning a blind eye to certain kinds of things and allegations. On the other hand, with the same mouth, we're complaining that there's a rise of fraud stars, there's a rise of internet, um, uh, what's it called, scammers and, you know, different things, rise of usage of drugs and all of those things. Does it not conflict? Right? Because if we say, because I feel like everything now, it's coming full circle, and I think, right, if we must find a solution to this problem in Nigeria, everybody that is 50 and below, you know, I mean, sorry, 50 and below, you have no business with the problem. People that are 50 and above, you people are the problem of our country. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Because you see, what you have done is that we are mirroring. And you know the thing about mirror. When you do, if I learn from you, I will be better than you. Because what we, have, we, are, we are successfully doing as a nation, we are breeding, we are like we are a breeding ground for real hardcore criminality. Because that's what is happening. So if we say we want to curb it, then we must start to see the older generation, people that have questionable characters, people that have been linked with whatever, let's start to see some level of, you know, what we, we completely frown at this thing, and let's see those um, judgments happening. Maybe that's why Ekwere Madu's case, you know, is looking like people are saying, okay, yes, some level of justice is happening. But if we do not see that, right, and this is not us trying to now fight, it is the older generation themselves saying that, no, this one, oh, my hands are not clean. Let me step back. Mm. Because if I go there, I'm telling people that it is okay to do crime and you will still be celebrated. I don't know if you get what we are going I with. I know what you're today. saying. Um, you, you have divided the society in a way different from how I would have divided it. Mm. You've divided it by age. Age, yeah. But I don't think age exactly is the problem. 
So what's the problem? You see, um, an analogy is when you take the northern Nigeria, and people say, oh, they, they don't want to go to school. Mm. Uh, we even have to have the uh, uh, Western education is a, is a taboo or something in some part. But when you look closely, what you find is mm -hmm. not uh, this homogeneous environment where people did not want to go to school. No, it is actually an elite versus the polit uh, an elite and political class mm -hmm. versus the rest of the people. Sure. So while the children of the elite and political class in that part, we go to the best of schools in Nigeria and, abroad. and proceed abroad and come back to take all the roles, it has been presented as if those other the children of the commoners uh, don't, don't like they don't school. like to go to school. Mm -hmm. I was discussing with a friend of mine about school in certain part of the north. He said the impression that people don't want to go to school is is largely wrong. In some instances, there are even no schools to go to. And nobody is talking about those part. So the, the, the problem with Nigeria, we tend to look at um, leadership and separate public sector and private sector. There's even a tendency to think that it is government that is corrupt. But in the real sense, the without the private sector, the, the corruption of, the, of government will be limited. Mm. How do you carry out the money? Mm. Who pays all the money? He must, mm. he must launder them through banks. Yes, he must, through the, yes. yes he must pass through the system. private sector. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is the private sector that facilitates. So what we're dealing with is much more deeper than the age, than, than age mm. matters. So even across that age that you have spoken about, I, I was speaking with a young man who, who took a ride with me one day, and he, he was talking about how um, we had nobody to trust. Mm. That uh, it, it was in the days of uh, removal of subsidy by. Jonathan, mm. that they've created this committee that is meant to supervise, survive, and that there is nobody. And then another person who was also there now, ah, but he said, but there is a Justice Kayo Deashaw now. As at that time he was mentioning Justice Kayo Deashaw, it was already late. Mm. I said, but justice is it's late. So there are still people here today who are of those older cast, pristine records. The Akintola Williams are still, is still alive. Christopher Collardet is still alive. They are also mm -hmm. of that same generation, right? So it is not an entire generation that you cannot trust. That is not what has happened to us. Mm. But there are bad eggs, and it has become so pervasive and system systematic and systemic that the younger generation have also imbibed. So yeah, I, I agree with you perfectly that within the younger generation, the problem is even probably deeper mm. because they've learned from the worst. They've learned well. Yeah. And they've learned well yeah. from mm. the worst. Yeah. That is why, even in the political space, when people say, Oh, it's all these old people, I said, How old was Amichi in 1999? Yes. How old was Yahaya mm -hmm. when he became governor? Even them, Fashola, how old were they? Mm. Most of these people were young. A lot of them were below 40 mm. when they came into politics in 1999. We, how old was Wiki? Wiki is just 53 or something, or 56, there about now. So take Re out eight years. Take out, take out 24, which was when he came into mm. politics. And you see he has been around for, for, a, for long a long time. time. So we, we, we will miss it mm. if we mm. think it is just an age problem. Mm. However, the mm. older generation must be deliberate also about helping the society to, to, to understand what the problems are. Mm by living exemplary, begin to set example. Let's be able to have more Christopher Collardis. Let's be able to have more of those. Uh, um, what's the former vice president? I, I, uh, he's late now, from Oko mm. in, in, in Anambra State. Mm. You see all these people, they've been there, and they need an example. In fact, when I, was, when I got chartered, uh, what's the name of this former vice president of Tushagari now? I'm trying to find this name. <laughs> <laughs> When I was being inducted, then Alex Sequeme. Alex Sequeme. Thank you, Norman. Alex also had someone, I can't remember whether it was a child or someone who was getting inducted. So he came. You know, this man was sitting in the crowd. It was somebody that identified him and said, Ah, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, this is a former vice president. And I had to call him up to recognize him. Mm. Where are those, those people. men? We are coming. Mm, mm. Let's take a break. <laughs> hey. We'll be right back.
All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic good governance and the responsibilities of the older generation. And we have with us Bola on Oloja Day. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with a hashtag WayShow. So before we went on the break, you were saying, where are those people? Well, we are actually searching for them. But, Jola, <laughs> we have to search for them more. Okay, so um, again, for me, I, I, I think um, we need to go back to asking ourselves, who are we? We have an identity problem. And um, if you don't know who you are, it's, very, it's, it's almost impossible to replicate yourself or to, to, to tell another person, you know, how to be good or how to have values and or to even give a history or to even say, okay, you know what, this is the path. You should stay on this path. Now, and if you're sorry to cut, if yeah. you don't know who you are, mm. it, it, you would also fall for anything. Exactly, Correct. exactly. So now, I, I am looking back to the, the age of my father's, okay, he was in his late 70s before he passed just recently. And when you hear them talk, you can sense the sense of, oh, okay, uh, let me give an example. The Yoruba people, they pride themselves on being a people of culture. And you would imagine that, or you would think that to a very large extent, that culture should drive their daily living. A proper Yoruba person, you are expected to behave in a certain way. At the, at the root of all that is, don't do what would Your shame your parents. Proud of you. Do, do you understand? But you, you come back now, and then you are asking yourselves, I mean, at what point, if people are 50 something, 60 something, it's almost as if they have forgotten this basic rule, whether from the north or from the south or from the east, we all have fundamental cultures that should drive our daily living. Again, it goes back to identity, whether they don't say it enough or whether we just feel, okay, you know what, we have evolved to the point where that is not necessary anymore. <laughs> you want to speak to that? <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you, you, you see, um, the, the problem with identity is a very serious matter. Mm. As a matter of fact, it, it, it's also part of... Um, the regrets we will have mm. over time with the current Jackpot syndrome. Mm. Um, a lot of people have lost interest. Uh, we've had situation in the world, we read news about people tearing their, their passports. passports. Um, there is a belief that when you go out there, um, all the opportunity, you become a citizen today mm. in the UK, you can contest election and probably can win. Mm. But you see, I've been around enough to see people who have lived a part of their life in Nigeria and then went abroad. Their mind never left Nigeria. If you were born out there and you've never experienced, there is no part thing, of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different thing. As a matter of fact, most of the news about Nigeria that I get every day is from my friends who are abroad. <laughs> uh, and I'm asking myself, my <laughs> you are the way you are abroad. I thought she, she should be the matter that is, uh, prim that is the primary to you. But no, they listen because they still hope and wish for this country to work. Mm. So, but if people don't even have an identity, if they can't, uh, they, they have no root to, 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 to hold on to, mm. uh, they will easily get blown away yeah. by anything. Mm. And it is not good for us as a country. Mm. The way India has been able to manage its own situation in which a lot of people left India around the same time, and today, uh, they not only have planted themselves firmly in many parts of the world, mm. they also returning back. Return yeah. back. But I think Same India did a major role in bringing those um, things to happen. I mean, bringing the, 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 people. the people back. Yeah. Can we also yeah. do the same? Yeah. That's what we must be asking. Is your generation Okay, Bulam, but wow, thank you so much. I mean, it's 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 already, I'm just thinking, I'm just building in my head and just wondering like, oh, wow, what's the way forward for us as a nation? So I, I wanted to ask a question with regards respect. You know, they say respect is reciprocal. And um, 
in as much as our the older generation they desire that the young generation respect them or uh, uh, look up to them but the younger generation are complaining that there's nothing to look up to because what has been passed on from one generation to the other is what has brought us to where we are as a nation today so i want to ask what is the older generation not paying attention to? And what can they do to begin to earn the trust of the younger generation? Because really, the truth of it is that we cannot uh, do away with the older generation. Like Jola said earlier, they have the experience and uh, they, they have the wisdom, whether they are aware of it or not. So how can they be relevant, uh, apart from being an example or role modeling, how can they actually pay attention to the needs of the younger generation and plant themselves to become impactful in order for us to really change the narrative that is already our reality in today's Nigeria? I, I, I believe they must be deliberate about understanding that generation. We don't, the older generation, does not exactly um, understand that generation much. Mm. So, um, and if you don't understand a problem, how do you proceed to solve it? Mm. So, d deliberate effort to understand them and draw them in. As it is today, they are at, they are, they yeah. are loggerheads. Meanwhile, there are mutual values across both groups. And those values could be passed on if there is enough attention to understanding those people and supporting them to succeed. Because that is the future. These older people will soon get old and out of the place. Sorry, as an aside, mm -hmm. let me just let me just ask this older generation now. Mm -hmm. So what gap are we are we looking at? Because there is also the So what they they departure <laughs> line. But they just they just don't they just refuse to depart. <laughs> because there is also an issue, a huge gap between well, millennials and then Gen Z. There is a war going on. Mm. Millennials will blame Gen Z. Gen Z is blaming millennials. So the millennials, who are they blaming? Do, do, do you understand? So I think it is also very important to even understand who we refer to as the older generation. But we because say we are older generation. Exactly. 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 <laughs> I think we we'll just take a cut of, um, you 50, know, 50 and above. Yeah, and above. Well, that's why I said, as I told, I said mm -hmm. it from the while. I've already calculated, calculated it for you people, but I, I get your point really yeah. strongly that if we limit it to age, then yeah. we'll lose yeah. or we'll miss the real challenge. Mm -hmm. And again, if we truly say we want to solve a problem, you know, uh, we must also trace it back to the root. Yeah. So, where did we lose our conscience? Where did we lose? You know, because now it seems like we do things conscienceless. We just do it, you know, because I can do it. Now, see this governor that we read his story. Um, the, the, let's even just focus on Lagos State governor. governor. Mm. So the, 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 the salary has come back to me. Mm. They said after completing his tenure, the governor is expected to receive a 6.6, 6, um, so 6.6 .6 million plus se severance gratuity. And the breakdown of the salary, the total salary will be about 11.5 million. That sounds gratuity. Yeah. Okay. So let me explain the thing, because you are the finance man. So what gives? Can they put up, put up um, Diola's uh, post yeah. again? What gives that you... Because when we say there's problem, this is the problem that we're seeing, right? That you sit down and you think it is okay. We're in a state where we are complaining that we have financial crisis as a country, Right? And somebody sits down and sits on this kind of bill, right? They say it has passed second hearing. Yeah. If it's not signed before May 29th, they, they will go and start again. all over again. So what they've been doing to us is that they'll just lead us, lead us, lead us. May 29th, they don't sign it, they will take it back again. That you're asking for 300% of, of furniture, um, of basic salary, basic of salary of furniture. furniture. Like, please, what is this? <laughs> like, really, what is this? For life, so if you live for the next 30 years, this goes on. 
you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm so this is why we say that, you know, it, for me, it does not make any sense, right? Because all these people, I get it. A lot of these people, some of them, they were in their 30s, they were in their 20s. And like I said to you that the problem is vicious. You know, if I learn corruption from you, I cannot do it the way you did it. Are we, in, are we are technology? You can never catch me. Mm. It's impossible. Just forget it that there is no way that you will match up to me. That's why now I'm so scared. I see 20-something-year-olds buying a car of 200 million. I called my sister the other day. I said, I have not been working hard. Mm. Do you understand? 200 million, 300 million. They are buying properties. So what we are doing is that we, are, we have successfully built a generation that, like, you, you thought, okay, these people don't have conscience. This one, if they open, okay, the, our, the, our generation, their conscience, they are back. Mm. This one, when they no open conscience. now, there's no, it's, it's, there's no, no sign. Yeah. So how do we solve this problem? So how can the older generation mend this problem? Because I will still put it back that they really are the originators of the problem. But it, it, it's good that we're discussing the problem, yeah. and I think it's part of the way. For Lagos State, for example, I remember that in 2021, Lagos State actually uh, halved the the, uh, gratuity. the gratuity and every, all the benefits that it provided for the government. Mm. That was because even around that time, there was a lot of agitation, yeah. And they cut it down by 50%. So if there's a need to even revisit that further, let's revisit it. But you see, the problem is deep. It is deep. It you is. just mentioned a gratuity of 11 million. What is 11 million to a governor as a gratuity? What is it? It's, it's like a drop in the ocean. It doesn't mean anything. Those are things you give to. You should, we should be thinking of being able to give to uh, school principals when they... <laughs> when they leave, not a governor. Mm. I'm not a governor of Lagos State who presides over close to two trillion in budget okay. every year. Mm. So the, the safety net, what do I come back to after I'm done here? Must be robust, but it shouldn't be exploitative and disgusting to the people, mm. which is what we have. I, 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 won't have, I attended a party, one from retired justice house in Ikoi. And when I got to that house, I'm like, okay, if this is where judges live, then what's the why, why would I be corrupt now? <laughs> if you see space, not all those choking, you could eat whatever, where there will be mm, space alone. So those people must be comfortable. Mm. And that is meant to dissuade Anki Panki. Any form of corruption. But is it working? No. Mm. Because I said it today that I mean I saw a post today and I talked they talked about poverty how yeah. even the media, right? People in the media space, journalists are very poor, or they they don't do they're not paid well. Their remuneration is poor. Tell me, if I'm earning twenty thousand or seventy thousand naira salary, and there's a report that can fetch me seven hundred million, mm. why will I not kill the story and take the money? Right? So it's. It's a systemic it problem. It is, actually. It's a systemic problem. There's no way you will have the number of poor people mm. that we have and things will improve. We first have to deal with it from a systemic poverty. perspective. Yeah. Lift more people oh, out of yeah, that poverty. Yeah. When more people come out of poverty, then we begin to see reduction in, yeah. in corruption. corruption. In Go enter any tree in Lagos today. Mm. As you are packing, the way some people are already greeting you yeah. and others, that is not corruption, that is actually begging. Mm. And it shows a yeah. high level of poverty mm. all over the place. When you go and ask how much that guy gets paid, mm. 30,000. And you're asking yourself, 30,000. You, you probably have, you have a wife, you, some of them have children, they are sent mm. to school. They have to pay rent, they pay electricity. And you're wondering, so how exactly do you live? They live on what you call transfer income. Mm. Transfer income are income that they end with not yeah. So you come today, I give you 200 bucks, 500, 1K. That's what they live on. Hmm. A society that is built on that will not be able to successfully fight. Corruption, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Hmm.
speechless. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ongoing conversation, I it think. Is, I mean, actually. yeah. And, yes, I, mm, and I think at our very basic levels, there are just some things that, you know, we must do. I, I always say that every opportunity you, f you find yourselves, you must do right before you earn the right to be able to say to another person that right. you, you, you are not doing watching. right. Yes. A lot of things we're doing sometimes. We're thinking thinking yeah. 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 But there are some things I cannot come out to say I want to go and run. There is some position I cannot run. Yeah. Do you understand? Because I'm not holy. So let me step up. I'm saying that can we prick the conscience of the older generation mm. now? We've tried everything. We've tried to fight them. It's not working. We've tried this. So can we prick their conscience? Like, okay, just for the sake of who is coming in front, can you just, this thing, there's question marks around it. Mm, mm. Do you understand? You, it, you've, you've fallen fully back mm -hmm. to separating this matter mm -hmm. by age. Ah. You see, I know within, <laughs> within that older generation you are talking about, mm. there are people who are complaining every as well. yeah. about some elite that they can, political class that they see in front. Mm. They are in the same shoes as those yes. younger people Absolutely. who are also complaining. Absolutely. That is the reality. Okay, so can we break the conscience of our people in leadership? Yes, let's prick the, continue to prick the conscience of people in leadership to live exemplary lives. Mm. And we can begin to turn things around and rebuild this nation block by block. Mm. These are the people who are looking up to. Yeah. And if they are not living up to the whatever, uh, the society will not, will not heal. Mm. Well, thank mm. you so much. We're going to bring you. Yeah, absolutely. At that time, I'll have your definition of what <laughs> But thank you. Had an amazing conversation. Yeah, I, 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 I really it. feel pained, but hey, yeah. we will leave. It is what it is. Mm. We'll get better. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Diola. Thank you, Norma. Now, before we go and show you, follow us across all our social media handles. Let me apologize. It's because of me that we're not taking messages today. I will try to read it tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. Most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote here, it is again, each generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that went before it and wiser than the one that comes after it. It's this way. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. <laughs> to bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.